Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. I can turn faucets easier, get in to get a shower a lot easier. Picking things up off the floor is just a little bit easier, which were much more difficult before I started on the biosimilar. Welcome to Breaking Down Biosimilars, a podcast that brings light to biosimilars and helps you better understand the role they play in your healthcare now and in the future. I'm Zoe Rothblatt. And I'm Connor Mertens. Both of us are patient advocates and community outreach managers at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Our goal is to introduce you to biosimilars, what they are, how they get approved, their potential savings, and what promises they hold. We also hear from a few people who've been taking biosimilars about their own experiences, and we cover some common myths about biosimilars and try to separate fact from fiction. So, in our first few episodes, we looked at what biosimilars are, how they differ from generic drugs, and how they get approved. And we also talked about how biosimilars are relatively new to the U.S. market and why patients are often reluctant to switch to a biosimilar until they learn more about them. Right. And this time, we're going to talk to several patients who've made that switch and hear what their experiences have been like so far. And the first thing to mention here is that biosimilar drugs are administered in different ways, and this is depending on the type of medication. But it'll still be given the same way as its originator biologic. So if the original biologic is an infusion, the biosimilar will also be an infusion. Some patients, like Shelly Fritz, travel to an infusion center to receive the biosimilar through an IV drip, and that sometimes can take up to several hours. Shelly takes a biosimilar called Inflectra for her rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. My doctor was right on top of getting things submitted to insurance to get it approved. That can be a big holdup, and it has been a big holdup for me in the past. Then we set up an appointment for me to go to the infusion center, which is at my local hospital. And then I have a scheduled day to go, and this infusion is every eight weeks. What do you kind of do to keep yourself busy during that time? When you get there, the nurse will assess your vitals, then they insert an IV. For some of us patients, we've had that done so many times, we don't even feel it much anymore. And then I'd get all set up with all my things. Like I've brought my laptop a couple of times thinking I'm going to get some work done, you know, (laughs) then I'll be honest. Here's what happens. The nurse gave me a heavy dose of um, Benadryl and, you know, it makes me really tired. So I'd get all set up with all my things and then just fall asleep. So um, pretty much I've just decided over the years that the best thing to do is call this me time. And I really enjoy it. I actually enjoy my infusion day because it's the day I bring the book I've been waiting to read. If I don't get to it, I don't get to it. It's not a big deal. I just kind of take that time for me and I just enjoy watching a favorite show or whatever. And then just go off to sleep, enjoy the day, feel a little rested when I'm done. I love that you've made this your you time and any activity that you can sit and relax and do is just something that you can bring to your infusion and make it a little bit happier and a little bit of a distraction. And it's great to hear that getting a biosimilar is pretty easy. It seems you get the needle put in and once you get over the insurance hurdles, then it's pretty simple. You go, you get the needle put in, you relax as much as you can, and you go home and you're good the next day. Exactly. And then I don't have to go back for eight weeks. It's something I kind of look forward to anyway. I know that it's going to help me because it's kind of another sign that it might be working because about a week before I'm scheduled to get my next infusion, I start feeling worse, much worse. So by the time that rolls around and I'm ready for infusion day, I know that it's going to make me feel better. And it does. I can turn faucets easier, get in to get a shower a lot easier. Picking things up off the floor is just a little bit easier, which were much more difficult before I started on the biosimilar. So that's what some patients have to do. Travel to an infusion site to receive their biosimilar. Other patients, like Laura McClinton, self-administer their medications at home with an injector pen. Here in the U.S., we don't have injectable biosimilars yet, although they are expected in the next few years. Lauren is in Canada, so she has this availability, and Lauren is diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis. I had worked myself up to feeling like an injection was a really, really big deal, and it can be a really big deal, but it really, most of the time, does just feel 
like a pinch. I'd say it's like less than a four on the pain scale for maybe like seven seconds most. I love that everybody has different things that they do to make their injection experience easier. And I used to be super, super needle phobic. I used to be very scared of doing an injection in my, like on my stomach or my tummy, but I find now that it's the best place to do it. I almost always do my injections in the evenings. It's a very small little injector pen, which is super handy. Well, that's a good trade-off compared to the pain of the arthritis. I would much rather take seven seconds of like a little bit of ouching followed usually by a chocolate bar than a whole week of feeling really tired with achy joints and soreness getting in the way of other stuff that I want to do. And a chocolate bar is a terrific end to the injection. Absolutely. Being able to take it just once a week in this tiny little injector pen is fantastic. It feels great to be able to have it sort of just on hand. The whole process from start to end takes like 15 minutes. I think it's easy to think about a medication like this as a really invasive or sort of looming medical option. I definitely, before I started it, it felt like a really big deal. I would say that it's the medication that has worked most easily into my life and my routine because it's so easy to manage and because you take it once, it's easy to do, and then I feel great for a week. Lauren receives her medication through a nearby specialty pharmacy, and she says they're very efficient still delivering to her house, even though she's moved 45 minutes away. They call me when they're about to be outside and I run downstairs and I receive my big refrigerated package of the biosimilar. And then it goes right in my fridge. And often, because they are very on top of it, they manage all of the insurance and provincial coverage of the biosimilar. Some days I'll get a call and I won't even realize that I've been low on the medication and they're here with more. At the beginning, I probably would not have said that it's such an easy process because getting it set up is a different animal entirely, but having it delivered is fantastic and so easy. How are you feeling now one year into being on this biosimilar? How has it helped you? In what ways do you feel better? Maybe not so much. Tell us about how you're doing. The number one greatest impact that it has had has been helping manage my fatigue. Before taking a biosimilar, I was able to curb my joint pain and symptoms like that through other types of medication, but I never really found that anything was able to tackle the fatigue. And it's not something that you notice because fatigue sort of sneaks up on you and you don't really notice that you're feeling tired every day until you're not tired every day. And that was really, really stupendous. So being able to wake up in the morning and actually feel like I slept the night before was amazing. And being able to get through a week or two weeks without feeling like, well, because I did something at the beginning of this week, I can't do something at the end of this week also. Or like really having to carefully budget my time and energy. I think that taking a biosimilar has massively helped those feelings. So it sounds like Lauren's experience with taking a biosimilar has been a success so far. Shelly Fritz, who we met earlier, also faces the daily challenge of managing her fatigue. Like worse than ever fatigue. Like I can't even imagine a time in my life and I'd been teaching full time. Now I'm retired from teaching. So I'm having fatigue now that I never had before. Shelly says that being upfront with her doctor about how she was feeling allowed them to jointly decide on a treatment option. He's upping the dosage of my biosimilar for my next appointment. So there are things that can be done and and new medications out there that your doctor might suggest for you if you just tell your doctor what's going on and, and what your goals are to feel better. I also spoke with Sabina Neto, who takes Inflectra to treat her psoriatic arthritis. Sabina shared some interesting analogies which describe how fatigue affects her daily life. One of them is the spoon theory that was created by Christine M., Christine lives with lupus and uses this theory to explain to a friend the realities of living with a chronic illness. In any given day, you have a certain number of spoons. Let's just say it's 50 spoons, and so that's your energy reserve. So let's say taking a shower, blow drying your hair, getting ready in the morning takes 10 spoons or 5 spoons or 2 spoons. Making breakfast takes a certain amount of spoons, driving to work. So you have this set number of spoons, and you learn how many spoons different activities take. So you know if 30 is your max before you are kaput, then you know, okay, so if I have to you know, go grocery shopping today, 
maybe that's not the day I do the full curly hair method at home in the morning because <laughs> I know that wash, diffuse, all that stuff is going to take forever and a lot of spoons. And so maybe I don't do those two things on the same day. The other analogy I use, I had to get a new iPhone recently because my old iPhone app, I had it for a long time and it would leave the house and it was 100%. And like, by the time I got to my destination, it was like 30%. And it really made me think about like, oh, it reminds me of me. <laughs> like how you leave the house with your fully charged battery, you know, it's going to last you all day. But like when you have an autoimmune condition, do you leave the door at 100? Well, you're never really at 100. You can leave the door at 80. And then by the time you're done grocery shopping, you're at 20. You need to plug it, rest and charge and so that's just another analogy that I thought kind of funny. Given the two analogies, the spoons charging, do you think that your biosimilar has helped maybe add some spoons to your day or increase your charge? 100%. All my inflammatory markers are down. The stiffness in the morning, overall pain is significantly decreased. I feel significantly better, but the condition is still very much a daily part of my life and how I manage my energy and how I have to manage pain, it's just a lot easier to manage. I think that now, because you're not spending so much of your energy in pain, when you just want to make breakfast and you want to cut up a vegetable and you know how much energy you put into like, oh, that hurts, but I still want to do it. And you don't have to do that. So that part is diminished. So I feel like you do get those energy stores back. And then in general, I think just because it is helping to improve your condition that some of the fatigue is diminished. So I don't feel the level, that deepness of fatigue, but I definitely get tired and I have to sit and rest and respect that. Next time on Breaking Down Biosimilars, we hear about the insurance maze that patients often face when they switch from a biologic to a biosimilar. And we'll look at why the predictions of big savings with biosimilars have yet to come true. We have a lot of patients who go for infusions and we might write the order for one particular drug and that may have been written six or eight months ago. And now that patient's insurance has changed or maybe it hasn't even changed. The insurance company has changed their minds and then suddenly they're saying, the drug we gave you before is not on our formulary. Well, listen, we hope you learned something in this episode about what it's like to take biosimilars. And if you're currently taking a biosimilar, we'd love to hear from you about your experiences. So send us an email at breakingdownbiosimilars at ghlf.org. Thanks for listening to Breaking Down Biosimilars, a podcast that sheds light on biosimilars and helps you better understand the role they play in your healthcare now and in the future. If you like this episode, give us a rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts and hit that subscribe button wherever you listen. It'll help more people like you find us. I'm Zoe Rothblatt. And I'm Connor Mertens. We'll see you next time. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.